Welcome to this White Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest white health research suggested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our podcast studios today is Dr. Gil Patterson. Dr. Patterson is a co-founder and chief medical officer at VetNow, one of the leading veterinary telemedicine companies in the United States. Dr. Patterson, thanks for coming on the show. Welcome. Great. Thanks for having me, Clayton. It's great to be here. I know, Gil, you and I have known each other for quite some time, uh, but there may be some folks out there that haven't had the pleasure of meeting you. Why don't you give everybody a little bit of background? Yeah, sure. So as you said, I'm the chief medical officer and, and co-founder of a veterinary telemedicine provider called VetNow. Um, I started out in swine practice after finishing vet school at the Swine Vet Center in St. Peter, Minnesota. Uh, spent a number of years there before leaving practice to go back to school at the University of Minnesota, where I did a residency in veterinary public health and preventive medicine. Uh, from there, I then moved to Eastern Tennessee um, with my family at that time. And I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do because there's not a lot of pigs there. Um, but did find out about a new vet school that was opening called Lincoln Memorial University at that time. It was the new, newest vet school in the country, the first or one of the first uh, new vet schools in about 30 years or so. So I joined the faculty of this new vet school, which was a really exciting experience. They asked, hey, could you teach swine medicine? And I said, well, sure, I can do that, uh, which was great because there was no one else there that knew much about pigs and could tell me otherwise. So that was really good while I was there. Um, I, I also developed a course on rural veterinary practice that was you know, designed for fourth year veterinary students um, to equip them with some tips and tools um, resources to help them be more successful in rural veterinary practice, which, you know, was a focus of the school. And I'm sure you're aware of within the industry is really a crisis of, you know, how we, how we, uh, equip, um, you know, long-term veterinarians in these rural settings. One of the tools that I was exploring further, uh, in developing this course was telemedicine. And um, wanting to learn more about that, I got reconnected with a vet school classmate of mine, Dr. April Horball is her name, um, who was a friend of mine in vet school and had gone on her, you know, we gone on our separate paths. Uh, she was an equine veterinarian and um, had started this company called VetNow. And basically she asked me, she came down to LMU for a conference to talk about telemedicine. And she asked me, Gil, do swine vets ever use telemedicine? And my response was, well, yeah, they do it all the time. Um, so one thing led to another. That was three years ago, right when kind of COVID was really ramping up, and um, it's been you know off to the races ever since then. It's been really exciting to be part of this startup company and to um, really just talk with all kinds of different veterinarians from across different industries and uh, find various ways to apply this tool that I feel can really help veterinarians be more productive, more efficient, and happier in their day to day lives. Gil, you mentioned uh, telemedicine is something that maybe pig veterinarians are already doing it, whether they know it or not. You want to kind of share some examples of where you see telemedicine uh, augmenting kind of the historical client-patient relationship and vet services part of the industry? Certainly. Um, swine veterinarians especially, and, and really all food, food, food animal veterinarians that um, go in the, you know, in the truck to visit their patients versus having them come to them. Um, they, they, you know, their, their phone is their lifeline. So they're constantly on calls. They're sharing videos and text messages and pictures, uh, pulling up, you know, video results, writing VFDs, all that stuff is happening, you know, with your tablet or with your phone or your laptop, um, already that the, the issue though, is that, you know, often that happens in a sort of disjointed way. There was a text here and then there was a picture there on an email uh, you, then you made a phone call and you hung up the phone and, you know, it, it might be hard to recall the exact specifics of what you said after you, after you hang up. Um, and then more importantly, a lot of these times you, you have a, say a five minute call that then, you know, turns into a 30 or 45 minute call. And, you know, the ability to monetize that in a way that the veterinarian feels that their, you know, expertise is being fairly compensated for can be difficult. So the, our angle in, in really starting that now was to try to bring all these touch points with various clients all under one umbrella so that, you know, all your communication logs with clients are, are easy to find and retrieve, uh, to use for invoicing or just your own record keeping, um, trying to be better organized. You know, I remember, you know, jotting notes on the back of, you know, 
McDonald's cup or something in, in, in my driving down the road and, you know, trying to get all that information in a way that's, you know, concise, um, professional looking for, you know, both yourself as well as for the clients to be able to see, yeah, here's, here's a record of what we talked about. Here's my recommendations. Um, you know, the ability to share pictures and documents and know where those pictures came from. Um, so that you don't have to be scrolling through text messages to try to find, you know, where that, where that re uh, relevant picture might be. So there's lots of, um, advantages in that case of just, you know, being, being more organized, keeping a good, uh, record of the client communication log, um, which helps in various ways of just being able to practice better medicine, deliver a higher level of service. Um, and then also just reduce the number of headaches that you may run into, uh, you know, at the end of the month when you're trying to, you know, do your invoicing or, um, you know, just, just keep a, keep a, keep a good record of what you've been up to. Yeah. And I think you described it very well with the ability to organize our information will ultimately make it more valuable than just kind of ad hoc stuff. Um, do you see, um, any other, uh, veterinary groups or species groups that are maybe kind of ahead, any case studies you could share from non pig type situations where they're using telemedicine and getting that integrated value out of it? Yeah, certainly. So as I, as I said, I've, you know, talked with a lot of different veterinarians uh, across all kinds of different industries in that the three years that I've been in vet now, you know, including companion animal. And one conversation that really struck me was with an aquaculture veterinarian in Canada. He was in Nova Scotia and he had said that he goes out to these, these fish farms that are out in these, uh, you know, in the ocean, in these bays that are, um, you know, these big nets that are floating there with you know, a million, a million salmon in them. And he was saying it takes him, you know, four hours to drive to the dock. And then it's another four hour boat ride to even get out to these, um, to these fish farms that are out there. Um, and on that farm, there's a million salmon and, um, you know, he goes there once a month. So that's, you know, a day and a half, at least to even get there and back, uh, for one thing. And he said, you know, often the, the guys will call me and they'll say, Hey, we need to, we think we need to treat the fish. They're, they're dying. And I'm going to make a, a six figure decision about treating these these fish i need to have you know because they need to be treated yesterday fish are dying um it's an expensive uh call to use the right antibiotic and to be able to have more information at my fingertips uh quickly is, is critically important so that to me relates very closely to swine considering how how many miles us as swine veterinarians we drive each year um you know these farms that we, we visit are hundreds of miles and many states apart often um, so there's a lot of time and distance between, um, when we can get there in person. So having a tool such as telemedicine that allows uh, us as veterinarians to have more information at our fingertips when clients call us is one advantage. And then also being able to deliver, you know, the right recommendations, uh, as well as follow up and have a good record of that, I think is critically important. So, um, you know, in, in summary, I think the advantages that telemedicine can offer to the food animal veterinarian are, are by far and away uh, so critical and important to um, just the the ability to practice good quality medicine and to be be able to deliver a high level of service. Well, I think um, <clears throat> obviously telemedicine will never completely replace in-person visits, but the amount of data that we have available to us to make the remote decisions is better than ever. 20 years ago, it would have been hard for, uh, you know, a previous generation of veterinarians to pull up uh, the dashboard and look at treatments, look at mortality records, look at feed deliveries, look at in-process data. Um, and with all the different sensor technologies that are getting deployed in the barns today, we need to look at environmental information. Um, so there's, there's a lot of evidence that's out there that you can gather today sitting in front of your computer or looking at your phone that you couldn't have 10 years ago. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, absolutely. I think... Um... You know, I always say that, again, telemedicine is not meant to replace those in-person visits, those, you know, the sights and sounds and smells and the relationship building, the side conversations you have with the producers when you're in the barn. You can't justly replicate those uh, through a telemedicine call, but you're right. We do now also have all of these different sensors and uh, databases and uh, other other things that can give us a, a quite a good picture of what's happening in the barn without actually being there. And uh, there, there, there may be some instances, I would argue, that, you know, the veterinarian who is remote, at, say, at their desk, has some um, 
some abilities that the veterinarian that's in the barn doesn't have because they're able to visualize, you know, the entire flow and look and compare barns, um, see what the temperature and humidity was at two in the morning um, so that, you know, they're able to, to really grasp uh, a good sense for what's happening um, throughout the, you know, in that sort of the bigger picture. And again, it doesn't replace those in-person visits. Those are still so important to do. Um, but I think the veterinarian, when they're in those in-person visits, can really spend a lot of time uh, working with the producers to, you know, help them to be your eyes and ears in the barn so that when they call you, they can, um, you know, they, they can answer the, the relevant questions to help you, you know, make good recommendations and so forth. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Gil, for coming on the show. Um, to our audience, thanks for listening in to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. Um, if you have not subscribed to the podcast, please make sure to do so so that you can catch every new episode. Uh, Dr. Patterson, it's been a pleasure to chat with you as always, and thanks for everything you're doing to try and help build these tools that folks like myself desperately need. Great. It was great to be here, Clayton, and uh, look forward to seeing where this all goes with telemedicine. Excellent. For Dr. Gil Patterson, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health-related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com, and we would love to take a look at your research.